Hey everyone, today we are going to create this cool synth wave-esque logo. So to start, I am going to select the ellipse tool and I am going to create a circle. And I can hold the shift key to make sure that it is a perfect circle. And after that, I'm going to try to drag it as center as I can. And then I'm going to create a new layer. With this, I'm going to fill in the gradient of the background. So I'm going to click my gradient tool. And I want to select what my foreground and background colors are going to be down here. So I want this purple. And then the second color, I believe, is this purple. So I want it to go from dark purple down to a lighter purple. So I'm going to double click my gradient tool. And I can see that it's foreground to background. Drag up from the bottom. You can hold command to make sure that it is a perfectly straight line. So now I'm going to go to select none. And we're going to create the blue border around this circle. So I want to go over to our circle layer and right click and go down to alpha to selection. And then I can go up to select grow. And I'm going to grow this by 10 pixels. So now I want to create a layer underneath this background. With this layer, I am going to fill in this new selection behind the circle layer. I'm going to go down to my foreground color and select the blue that I want the background to be. Then I'm going to click on my bucket tool and fill in that background layer. And then I can go to select none. Now, what I want to do is alpha to selection this purple circle layer, and we're going to cut this out of this blue layer. So we're going to go up after we have selected this blue layer, go up to select, or go up to edit, cut. And then we can go up to select, none. Now I'm going to duplicate this ring layer. And I'm going to drag both of them above the purple background circle. Now with the bottom most blue ring selected, I want to go up to filters, blur over to Gaussian blur. I'm going to change this to 10 pixels and click OK. Now let's create the sun in the middle. So we're going to go back up to our ellipse tool, select it and create a smaller circle within this bigger circle. And again, you can hold shift to make sure that it is a perfect circle. And then I'm going to try to move that as center as possible. You can also use this alignment tool over here to make sure that everything is perfect. So I want to create a new layer to make this circle have color. So I'm just going to go down and click on the new layer button and click OK. And I'm going to drag that above all the layers. Now we go over to our gradient tool again, but first we need to change our foreground and background to what we want the sun to have as its color. So for the foreground, I'm going to choose this yellow and the background, I'm going to choose this red, reddish orange. So now I can click this gradient tool and I can go from the bottom to the top holding the command key to keep it straight. And we have made our gradient onto this new circle. So I'm going to go up to select none. And now we can create kind of that Lion King-esque, but also synth wave little cuts in the sun. So to do that, we want to go up to this rectangle select tool and we can drag it all across this sun. And you can change how thick or thin you want these cuts to be. It's all up to you. So once we have one selected, make sure that our sun layer is selected and go up to edit, cut. And then we can move this selection down a little bit. And we can change the width and then go up to edit, cut again. And you do that all the way down the sun until you're happy with what your design looks like. Now I'm going to select this move tool just to get rid of that rectangle selection, but we can also go up to select 
nun to get rid of the marching ants. So now I want to create the mountain in front of the sun. So to do that, we go over to our pass tool, click that, and we really have free reign of what we can design for the mountain. So what I do with the pass tool is I create a point outside of the main logo, and then I just create jagged points anywhere that I want to create the mountain that's going to go in front of the sun. And then I just bring back this point as close as I can to the beginning point. So to make this a selection, we're going to go over to the paths dialog. And here's our path that we just created. We want to right click that and click on path to selection. And then we can go back to our layers dialog. So to place this new mountain, we want to create a new layer and we want to drag that layer above all the other layers. We can then go over to our bucket tool and I'm going to change my foreground color to black. And then I can just paste in that selection. And then I want to go up to select none. So this is not contained at all within the logo. So we need to make sure that it looks like it is contained within this purple circle. So to do that, we can Click this purple circle layer, right click, and then click alpha to selection. Go up to our mountain layer and go down to edit, cut. So now we can hide that mountain layer and go up to edit, paste. And then just select the new layer icon to paste that onto a new layer. So now we got the base down. So to add a little bit more detail in the back and may make it look more synth wave esque we can do a couple things with GIMP's filters. So if we click the purple circle background layer, we can go up to filters, distorts, and down to video. And this will recreate kind of an old analog TV and how you can almost see the different pixels and colors in it. So you can really experiment with what you want this background kind of effect to look like. And I recommend you do that just to see exactly what you want. So I'm just going to go with stripped. And now we have kind of a vintage kind of analog looking background. And we're going to do the same thing to the sun. So we want to click that sun layer, go up to filters, and we can repeat video or if you want to do a different iteration of the video filter, go ahead and go to distorts and video, but I'm just going to click repeat video. All right, so I think the sun is a little harsh, so I want to create kind of a blur behind it to make it look a little bit more soft and blend more into the background. So to do that, we can duplicate this sun layer by right clicking and going down to duplicate layer. Then you click the layer that is on the bottom of the two. And then you go up to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And then we can see this preview, how blurry it's going to be. I like 10, so we're going to click OK. And now it looks a little bit more blended into the background. If you want it to be even more blended, you can increase the pixels of the Gaussian blur. So now on to our text. I am using brush script MT italic, and I'm just going to type out the word synth. And you can type out whatever you want your logo to say. So to gauge what size I want this text to be, I'm going to make sure first that this layer is dragged into the front of everything. And I want it to reach from each side of this logo. So I'm going to increase the text size. Then I'm going to take my move tool and move this to about center in the logo. I'm then going to change the color of this text by double clicking on the text tool and then clicking on color and choosing the color I want. I'm going to keep it the same as this outline. So you can see that's a little much. It's kind of really in your face. So we're going to create a glossy effect on the blues of this logo. So I'm going to take my pen tool and I'm going to drag out where I want the darker part of the gloss to be. And I'm going to make a curve kind of halfway between the top and bottom of this text. Then I'm just going to complete that around. 
And to make this a selection, again, we go over to the Path dialog and right click the path we want to create a selection of and go down to Path to Selection. Now I'm gonna go back to my Layers dialog and I'm gonna create a new layer. And I'm gonna change the foreground to a darker version of the original blue. So I'm just gonna drag it a little to the left and click OK. Then I'm going to take my gradients tool and I'm going to change this to foreground to transparent. So I want to make sure that this layer is above my text layer. So I'm going to drag it there. And then I'm going to use the gradient tool and drag down from the center of the logo, holding command to keep the gradient straight. And you can also adjust this if you want it to be a little less harsh. You can also change that with the opacity up here. So now I'm going to go up to select none. And to make sure this isn't too harsh here, we're going to put a Gaussian Blur on this gradient. So make sure that that gradient you just created is selected. Go up to Blur from Filters and down to Gaussian Blur. We can check and see if we like how much this is blurring and click OK. Now again, we don't want this extra selection here. So to clean that up, we can click our text layer, right click, go down to Alpha to Selection, Go up to the gradient layer we created, make sure it's selected, and go up to Edit, Cut. And now we can hide that layer we created and go up to Edit, Paste. And again, to make the floating selection have its own layer, all we need to do is go down to the New Layer button. Now I want to create a highlight that goes above to complete this gloss effect. So I'm going to select the text layer, right click, go down to alpha to selection, and I want to create a new layer to make this new gradient on. And I'm going to make sure that white is the foreground selection. I'm going to click on my gradients tool, make sure it's foreground to transparent, and then click from the center up holding command to keep it straight, and you can make this more intense by running it over with the gradient again. And I'm going to go up to select none after I finish that. So I want this text to have kind of a neon glow. So how we do that is we're gonna duplicate this text layer, and then select the bottom most text layer, go up to filters, blur, Gaussian blur again. And then I'm gonna create a little bit more of a harsh Gaussian blur and click OK. So now it kind of glows like the sun and the ring around the whole logo. Now this background shines a little bright and it makes the text a little hard to read. So we're going to create a small gradient on top of this purple circle background. So I wanna select the purple circle background and right click and go to alpha to selection. Now we're gonna create a new layer to create our new gradient. And then we're gonna make sure that black is selected as our foreground color. And then make sure that our gradient tool is selected and that it's foreground to transparent. And I'm gonna drag from the top to the bottom since we have a lighter color on the bottom and a darker color on the top. And we really don't wanna cancel that out. So I'm gonna take this gradient tool from the top holding command and create a gradient down. And then I'm gonna go up to select none to get rid of those marching ants. And this is a little intense for how this gradient kind of overlays the background. So you can easily change the intensity by going up to opacity on this new gradient layer and turning it down a little bit. Now you can see the sun layer is not affected by this gradient. If you don't like that, which I really don't because that's really shining through here, making this a little bit hard to read, we can drag the black gradient layer that we just created above the sun layer to make sure that it also covers up the sun a little bit. There we go. Now it's not as blurring in the background. So one last touch I want to make to this logo. I want to make this blue outline match the text in here, the kind of glossy effect. So how we do that is very similar to how we did the original text. So we want to create a path that kind of curves 
near where it curves in the text layer. And then I'm just going to connect this all around. Again, to create a selection, we go over to our paths dialog and click the path we just created and then right click it, go down to path to selection. Now let's create a new layer to put our gradient on. I'm going to select the same color that I used for the darker portion of the text and then go over to my gradient, make sure foreground to transparent is selected and then drag from the middle down. Then go up to select, none. Then we go over to filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to change it to 10, just like our text gloss effect. Now we just want this to be contained within this outer blue circle. So we're gonna select our original circle, not the one that's blurred, and we're going to right click that layer and then click alpha to selection. Then we wanna go back up to the gradient we just created and go up to edit, cut. And then we can hide that gradient layer and then go up to edit and paste and create a new layer to paste the gloss effect that we just created. And then after pasting that, we can just click create new layer. I'm then gonna drag this down above the ring layer just so we can kind of have everything a little bit more neat and we know where everything is. I then am going to click the original ring layer. Again, not the Gaussian blurred layer. And I'm going to right click and go to alpha to selection again. Then after making that selection, we wanna create a new layer and then we can drag our gradient from the bottom up on this new layer, holding command to keep it straight. And then we can go up to select none to get rid of those marching ants again. So now we have a cool gloss effect that also matches our text. You can change the intensity of each of those elements again by adjusting the opacity up here. And we're done. Again, you can change any element you want in this logo. It's completely customizable. You can change what the sun looks like in the back, what the mountain looks like, all the colors, your fonts, etc. Did you try out today's tutorial? If you did, send us a DM with your design on Instagram and have the chance to be featured. If you enjoyed this video today, please leave me a like and subscribe. It really helps. Thank you so much for watching.